One of the most popular telescopes for someone beginning in astronomy is the Dobsonian style telescope. This is a very simple mounted telescope that uses gravity and friction in order to move the scope manually to any point in the sky. Even in Terence Dickinson's Night Watch book, he refers to the 6 to 10 inch Dobsonian telescope as an ideal beginner's telescope. In fact, he calls it an overachiever in the telescope market because it will reveal the division in Saturn's rings, the Cassini division. You'll be able to examine hundreds of craters on the moon, and then you'll be able to go into the deep sky and see uh, many different star clusters, nebulas, and galaxies. The Dobsonian telescope comes in many different sizes. I learned my astronomy with the 8-inch telescope, and then with the help of a very good instructor, was able to build a 10-inch and even a larger telescope in the Dobsonian style. John Dobson in the 1970s popularized this design, giving you very large light gathering and a very simple design to make it very affordable. We always encourage people to buy the largest that they can manage, and that means both financially and physically. If you can manage either the 10-inch Dobsonian, like this, or the 12-inch, you'll be rewarded with even better views and brighter views of those deep sky objects, the galaxies and nebulas. However, if you need something a little bit smaller, the Orion Star Blast 6-inch telescope is a tabletop version. It also will give you some excellent views. It's simple and easy to use. It's very sturdy, and so you don't get those jiggly uh, views that you would with many tripod-mounted telescopes. Even if you need something for less money, the Heritage 130 is the Dobsonian tabletop mounted telescope. It has five inches of light gathering ability. You'll be able to see more with this telescope and find it much easier to use than most of the telescopes that are sold in the department stores at this time of the year. We really highly recommend a Dobsonian telescope as one of the best values for getting up and started with your astronomy experience. If you can manage the 10 or the 12 inch Dobsonian telescope, this will become a lifetime telescope for you. In Sky and Telescope magazine, Gary Saraniak calls the 12 inch collapsible Dobsonian a star cruiser because it brings in enough photons that really makes you feel like you're cruising through the universe. The collapsible version is much more portable and easier to, uh, to transport as well as to store. You can easily collapse it into this shape, and then it's easier to load into the back of a truck, a van, or an SUV, and easier to store as well. All you need is one helper to grab a handle and lift it in. Or if you're by yourself, you can take it apart and put in the optical tube followed by the base. This version of telescope now also comes with motors, so it is a go-to telescope. It will find and track the objects for you as well. Before we go on to look at some of the higher-end telescopes that might become your first telescope, let me show you the Celestron Nexstar SLT-130. This telescope was reviewed in Sky News magazine, and it also appears in the Backyard Astronomer's Guide as a recommended first telescope if you really want to have a computerized telescope. It's 130 millimeters of light gathering, the same as the Heritage 130, but it comes on the computerized mount so that will track and find the objects in the night sky for you. It might be the answer to the person that really wants to have the computerized telescope at an economical price. I would like to also show you the Skywatcher 120mm refractor on an AZ-3 tripod mount. This has become a very popular telescope for those that want a telescope for use during both the daytime and the nighttime. The simplicity of use and being able to move it to basically any place or position that you want, to lock it down and then use the slow motion controls, make it just an ideal telescope for at the lake, for nature observing, over the ocean watching ships or watching whales, and then you can also use it at night to point it to the stars. You'll be able to see the rings of Saturn, several star clusters, galaxies and nebulas, as well as thousands of craters on the moon. It really does make an ideal telescope for daytime and nighttime use. 
It's not as large as some of the Dobsonians, so the galaxies and star clusters will not be as bright, but it does make a fabulous, easy-to-use telescope for a first-time purchase. One of my favorite telescopes is the Celestron CPC series. This is an 11-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope on a double fork-armed mount with a built-in GPS. When you first turn it on, it connects to the satellites and it downloads its date, time, and location. All you need to do is pick one or two stars to begin an alignment and then it knows where to go for everything else in the night sky. Whenever I'm working with a school group or other small group, I'll take the Celestron CPC 1100 with me because within 10 minutes I can have it set up and be observing. And once we put it onto an object like Jupiter or Saturn, it will track and everyone can take a look until we choose another object for it to look at. The CPC comes in an 11 inch and a 9 and a quarter and 8 inch diameter telescopes. We find that most people, if they can manage the little bit of extra weight, will go for the 11 inch telescope. It's the largest single person, quick setup, absolutely fabulous views through it, and, uh, and you'll be happy for a lifetime with a telescope like this. It's also possible to connect this telescope to take pictures with an optional wedge so that it becomes an equatorial platform, but if for visual use, it's one of the nicest telescopes uh, in the whole lineup. Many people have chosen this as their first telescope. As one of the final telescopes that you might want to consider if it's your first purchase would be a Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on a German equatorial mount. We recommend this if you're really serious about doing some astrophotography. The same optical tube as we showed you on the CPC also comes on this equatorial mount. The advantage to this is that when you get into astrophotography, it will serve you much better than the CPC mount. The visual views through these telescopes will be the same as in the CPC uh, models, whether it's an 8 inch, 9 and a quarter, or 11 inch optical tube. There's also the option now of what they call the uh, HD, Edge HD telescopes, which are really excellent for doing photography. That's a whole other chapter, but at least if you are looking at purchasing a telescope and have in mind doing astrophotography, having a German equatorial mount will give you a leg up in doing that. One of the best resources for getting up and started with your first telescope is the Night Watch book. I don't know of any easier, simpler, and excellent resource for teaching you where to point your telescope to see all those wonderful star clusters, nebulas, and galaxies. This book has helped thousands of people find their way around the night sky and point their telescope to those wonderful objects. You can begin with a sky map of the entire sky for the different seasons of the year in the evening uh, of the year. And here, for example, is a winter chart showing the constellation Orion and these bright stars that form a circle, including the Pallades star cluster, all the way around Orion. And then if you go over here, they draw the lines out to identify the constellations and point such as these three stars in Orion's belt down towards Sirius and then up in this direction towards the Pallades star cluster. These maps for each of the four seasons of the year will help you quickly identify the major constellations. And then within those constellations, we go to these additional charts of the constellations uh, in a further section of the book. An example of this would be in the area of Ursa Major, what we commonly call the Big Dipper. So when we look at the stars of the Big Dipper, it begins to identify what to look for. The middle star in the handle of the Big Dipper actually is two bright stars, and one of those stars, by the name of Mizar, is itself another telescopic double. Or if you were looking for the twin galaxies Messier 81 and 82, you could use the bowl of the Big Dipper, draw a line between those two stars, continue that line up about this far, and you'll find those two galaxies. Two beautiful galaxies. One of them is edge-on, and the other is face-on. We recommend this book for finding your way around the night sky. All you need to do is find one or two of these beautiful objects 
and you'll take off in your motivation, perhaps spending all night looking for all of those wonderful things that are up there. We've put together this book along with a moon filter because looking at the moon can almost hurt the eye. It is so bright when you collect all of that light and shine it into your eye. So a neutral density filter on the eyepiece of the telescope will allow you to spend many, many hours examining those craters and mountain ridges of the moon. And then finally, we uh, put into this package what we call a dual beam flashlight. When you're at your telescope, you'll be going back and forth to the night watch book looking for those objects. You want to use a red light so that your eyes remain adapted to the dark. Even if you run into the house for some reason, use a red light rather than turning on the regular light. And then when you come out to your telescope, you'll be able to see so much more. These are sold individually or as a package with your telescope. If you buy a telescope in this package, you'll be up and running for months to come with that telescope without needing to purchase anything extra. And you'll make some wonderful discoveries in the night sky. Let me conclude with another quote from Timothy Ferris's book, Seen in the Dark. He quotes an astronomer, Brian May, saying, I feel about astronomy the way I feel about music, instinctive rather than analytical. First, there's the ooh, the pure emotional enjoyment factor, both in music and astronomy, just allowing the beauty of the thing to wash over you. After that, you can get analytical, but if you don't first allow yourself to be overwhelmed, I think you've missed the best part of it. We hope that with your first telescope, you'll allow the beauty of the universe to wash over you. Good viewing.